Welcome back everybody. Welcome back to the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage. Uh, I am showing uh, in this video a, vi a machine that I recently got. Uh, this is a find, I, I'm trying to remember where I purchased it. I think I found it uh, listed online and it was being sold uh, with, you know, he didn't really talk about the condition, just said it looked nice. And this machine is uh, in a really beautiful bent wood case. Those of you who know sewing machine cases today are sometimes when you get them, they're fabric. Before that, they were often a hard plastic. Uh, before that, they were sort of a masonite material with a grass cloth covering. And before that, they actually made sewing cases out of wood. In this case, this is, of course, a singer. And if I take off the lid, you can see that it is a Singer 99. This machine comes with its original Bentwood case key, um, and, which works beautifully. And it even has a little, there was some information here when I got this, and it was a, there was a receipt, and the receipt showed that it was serviced, let's see here. Looks like it was serviced at somewhere in uh, St. George, Ontario, and uh, the person paid, uh, looks like $47, and this was in 2003, August of 03. Now, you may say, well, why does that matter? That kind of gives you uh, some clue, at least, to how recently the machine might have been serviced or used. Presumably, if someone had it serviced, it looks like they had a light bulb replaced and something else that it would have been used after that, but we don't really know how long after that the machine was in service. And the reason I say that that matters is you might think, well, gosh, that's 16 years ago. Sometimes machines can sit for longer. Uh, I mean, sometimes 40 years, you know, and so you will have some idea if you're looking for a machine to overhaul or restore or have someone restore. Um, at least I have some idea. So let's assume maybe they sewed for a few years afterwards. It's still about 15 years uh, that I can't account for, but that's okay. The Singer 99, as some of you have heard me describe before, in fact, I think I may have compared this machine to another older Singer 99 I have in an earlier video. Uh, but I wanted to focus on this one. This one is a 99K. And that tells me it was made in uh, the Kilbowie factory in Scotland. And even if you didn't know that, you can see, of course, on the inner pillar here, it will say made in Great Britain. And uh, the 99 is, is often referred to as the three-quarter machine uh, or three-quarters size. And it was made, it was based on the Singer 66. And if you've ever seen a Singer 66, uh, those machines were in production a very long time, and this machine is quite similar. One of the main differences, of course, is that it is three-fourths the width. Um, and even though it's three-fourths the width, uh, that reduced cost a little bit. It also made the machine slightly lighter. Singer would have advertised this as a quote-unquote portable machine. It's still relatively heavy compared to modern machines, but... Uh, even though it's three-fourths the width, it's not three-fourths the power. It has the same power as a Singer 66. And if you've ever um, wanted to, or let's say you were interested in a vintage sewing machine and you wanted one in a case, one that you could hopefully carry if you had to, uh, and you wanted something a little smaller and yet really powerful, this is a great example. Uh, of course, it uses the 66 class bobbins, which you see here. Uh, some of you call those the drop-in bobbins. And I wanted to focus today on the fact that this machine is in remarkable shape. Uh, I get machines in all sorts of very varied conditions, but if a machine is in a case and it's been stored indoors and there hasn't been any moisture, you can get some really good finds that way. Now, I take machines in tables and in cases. Sometimes, like the Singer 201 Centennial you all saw me do videos of prior, uh, even machines in tables can be gorgeous and in, in beautiful aesthetic condition um, as long as they've been uh, kept indoors and in reasonable climate control. This machine is extra beautiful. I mean, 
other than that little fine layer of dust there, it is the paint, and I'm going to kind of move closer here so you guys can see, it's really, the paint has a mirror-like finish. And of course, the, the machine would have been painted with black, and then the decals uh, applied, and then a coating of clear lacquer, what today we might call clear coating, was applied. And it's unusual to find a machine in this aesthetic condition. Uh, I've been looking at it, trying to see if I can find any Mars. Um, there's, there's virtually nothing of, over here. There's a few uh, sort of hairline uh, spots, but even then, with the shine, you can't even see them. I mean, it's incredible how magnificently preserved this machine is. Even the light bulb uh, cover is, uh, let's see if I can zoom into it. Even the light bulb cover is uh, over here is shiny, which is unusual. So I don't know, um, again, how many people own this machine. I'm moving a little bit closer there. But I can tell you it's, it's, very, it's very rare to see a machine in this kind of, kind of condition. Um, and I'll bend back just a bit here, and you can, of course, see the underside. I may have shown this in an earlier video. Again, it is all steel and iron. This machine is what I like to call a, a little beast. Um, and again, if you need a machine that's powerful, that can sew uh, pretty decently heavy fabrics, and yet it's not, um, you know, it's you're not looking for an industrial, and you don't want a larger machine, you don't need a machine in a table, about half my clients do and half don't, um, this is a great machine for someone who says, you know what, I need a straight stitch machine that's strong, that can really uh, sew everything from light fabrics to reasonably heavy ones if you can get them under the sewing foot. And if you are particularly uh, interested in the aesthetics of the machine, uh, it, is, it is remarkable. Uh, you can see the Singer um, decals. It's just a gorgeous machine. You know, it's, it's very unusual to come across anything in this condition. Um, and uh, let's see, I think there's one spot here and maybe a spot on the wheel. But other than that, the machine is pretty mint. And uh, so anyway, I just wanted to introduce this little 99. I'm going to be going through the overhaul process. And just like with the 185J, the little green machines that came after this, that were modeled on this, uh, I'll be, of course, replacing the, uh, uh, any of the uh, felts that need replacing. Um, and then, of course, I'll do a, a video when I'm finished and show the machine working. So for those of you who, again, love vintage sewing machines, but maybe you don't have the space and you want something that you could at least try to pick up, um, uh, and carry not I don't know that you would need to be to be mobile with it, but you could with this machine and uh, uh, This may be of interest to you, but stay tuned I'll be again going through and I'll be making another video when she's ready to uh, uh, Be demonstrated and is all uh, Has gone through its full overhaul reconditioning. Thanks for watching everyone and uh, watch for the next videos I have another series of videos coming up soon. Take care